welcome to City of Pasco Council meeting. The council thanks you for being part of our <laughs> Well, we're having some technical difficulties today. Um, I will start from the top. Good evening and welcome to City of Pasco Council meeting. The council thanks you for being part of our city government. At meetings, the city council takes formal action on items, holds public hearings, and conducts other business of the city. Agenda packets are available on the City of Pasco's website at wwwpasco watgov slash agenda. This meeting is being televised live on PSC TV channel 191 on Spectrum Cable in Pasco and Richland and is streamed on the city's Facebook page, website, YouTube channel, and go to webinar. This and previous council meeting video is available on the city's website. Lastly, the public may submit their comments and or questions by contacting the city manager, city clerk, or by using the Ask Pasco app. And with that, can I get roll call, please? Council members Brown. Present. Campos. Present. Milne. Present. Roach. Present. Serrano. Present. And uh, Mayor Pro Tem uh, Maloney. Present. Mayor Barajas. Present. And with that, would you please join me by rising and uh, for the flex salute. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. Thank you for that. Hey, give me just a second. My agenda was not ready. Perfect, here we are. Um, and with that, we'll go on to item number four on the agenda, all items listed under the agenda, under the consent agenda, are considered to be routine by the city council and to be enacted by roll call vote as one motion. There will be no separate discussion of these items. If further discussion is desired by council members of the public, the item may be removed from the consent agenda to the regular agenda and considered separately. Item A, approval of meeting minutes. To approve the minutes of the City of Pasco Council regular meeting held July 5th and special meeting and regular workshop meeting held on July 11th, 2022. Item B, bills and communications to approve the claims in the total amount of $4,618,823.94. To approve bad debt write-off for utility billing, ambulance, cemetery, general accounts, miscellaneous accounts, the municipal court, non-criminal, criminal, and parking accounts receivable in the total amount of $204,327.27, and of that authorized zero to be turned over for collection. Item C, resolution, Washington State Department of Commerce award. The motion to move. Motion, um, I move to approve resolution number 4203, amending the program year 2022 Community Development Block Grant Allocations for CDBGCV2. Item D, resolution Bonneville Power Land Use Agreement Supplement Number 1 for uh, Process Water Reuse Facility Phase 1 Project. Motion to approve resolution number 4204, authorizing the city manager to execute the land use agreement supplement number one with the United States of America, the United States of America Department of Energy Bonneville Power Administration for the Process Water Reuse Facility Phase 1 project. Item E, resolution amending city council representation on the community boards and committees. Motion to approve resolution number 4205, confirming mayoral amended assignments of council members to various community boards and committees for the years 2022 through 2023. And with that, can I get a motion? I move to approve the consent agenda as read. All those in favor say aye. Actually, yes. 
All right. Can I get a roll call vote, please? Yes. Council Member Serrano. Um, before I vote, I did have a question. It looked like one of the um, one of the committees was open, and, and maybe I misread. You know what? Never mind. I misread it. It was a one liner. So yes. There's a motion. Can I get a second? I'll second it. Okay. I apologize. It was all call vote. <laughs> all right. So Serrano said yes. Um, Campos. Yes. Brown. Yes. Milne. Yes. Roach. Yes. Maloney. Yes. And Barajas. Yes. And it passes unanimously. <clears throat> And with that, we move on to item five on the agenda, proclamations and acknowledgements. There's none listed. Item six on the agenda, visitors other than agenda items. This item is provided to allow citizens the opportunity to bring items to the attention of the city council or to express an opinion on an issue. Its purpose is not to provide a venue for debate or for the posing of questions with the expectation of an immediate response. Some questions require consideration by council over time and after a deliberate, deliberative process with input from the, from the number of different sources, some questions are best directed to staff members who have access to specific information. Citizen comments will normally be limited to three minutes each by the mayor. Those with length, lengthy methods messages are invited to summarize their comments and or submit written information for consideration by the council outside of formal meetings item seven do we have any oh sorry and with that do we have any comments from anyone in our um council chambers tonight Sir, if you would please turn on your microphone. Thank you. Uh, in 2016, a group of us Latinos, include myself, Leo Perales, and Bertha Glatt, who ended up putting her name on the lawsuit, sued the city of Pasco so that we could get fair elections and get more Latinos elected. The results came out the way we wanted. The city, then Mayor Watkins, non-Hispanic, and city manager Dave Zabel agreed with us and said, we need to get more Latinos on the city council, make the city council look like the city. They didn't fight it. They supported the lawsuit. So together we worked and unite, unified uh, ways of coming getting fair elections. We ended up having three Latinos on the city council. And then Nikki Torres wins her election by very few votes over Leo Perales. Leo Perales, N Nicky Torres then re resigns. You guys just had 11 people apply for that position. Leo Perales was one. Leo Perales in 2006 received 1,346 votes. And the will of the people was ignored in the appointment of Irving Brown. The will of the people was ignored in District 3. And I've talked to a lot of people in the District 3, and they were not happy with the appointment. Nothing to take away from Irving Brown. But he ran for office and only received 472 votes when he ran for office and didn't make it past the primary. And he was allowed to get an interview, and he was appointed to the position going against the will of District 3. The Latinos went backwards. Now we only have two Latinos on the city council. By ignoring the lawsuit of 2016 and other Latinos that supported and worked together. We're very disappointed. Many of us Latinos are very disappointed that Leo Perales was not even given an opportunity to uh, get an interview. He was ignored. Then he runs into the mayor. Boy, I called her a mayor first time. At a local restaurant, they see each other, 
And he waits for her to, to try to talk to her, and she goes out the back door. Couldn't even face Leo Perales after the appointment. And he waited and asked the Sir, kitchen if they, uh, if if they would uh, be able to talk. If you could please wrap up your comments. I still have a few more. Um, and so I, I think that uh, it was very inconsiderate that our two Latinos, Joseph Campos and Blanche Barajas, ignored the will of District 3 and ignored the lawsuit of, 20, of 2016. And now the Latino people... Sir, wrap up your comments, please. Thank you. What this city councilman, and the only one that had even guts to vote against the, the, the appointment was Mr. Serrano. So I'm very disappointed. We will be looking at these three districts. Uh, but Thank you, sir. Thank you. Sir, you can take a seat now. Thank you. And we appreciate that. Uh, Thank you, sir. You will listen to us next time you come uh, before you again. Thank you, sir. Subject. Anyone else wish to make a comment? Good evening, Council and uh, City staff. Thomas Grandwad, 202 North 8th Avenue. Uh, I just left a letter for you from. Uh, Gabriel Portugal, uh, on behalf of the Downtown Pasco Development Authority, asking that you approve cannabis retail sale in the Downtown Pasco C2 zone. That's it. Thank you very much. Thank you for that. Anyone else in our audience wish to make a statement? Yes, sir. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, Carl Holder, uh, 402 West Lewis. Uh, on your earlier meeting in July 5th, I spoke in depth about uh, my efforts to uh, achieve a uh, retail cannabis store at uh, location at 402. And uh, so now I uh, report that I do have a tentative lease with uh, a gentleman and his uh, company that has an LCB uh, license uh, ready to go. And we're ready to do business. We're ready to go in and, and do our revitalization work in downtown Pasco. And it, uh, it, it needs your support, and, and I really appreciate that. This is a, uh, a great opportunity, in my opinion, to revitalize downtown Pasco. Uh, let's give us a chance. Let's uh, open up some new business downtown. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you. Anyone else wish to make a statement? Seeing none, we will move on with our agenda to item number seven, reports from committees and or officers. Um, if any of our committee members, uh, council members, wish to make a report. Councilman Campos. Uh, thank you, Mary Barajas. Uh, happy to report that we finally made some headway for the Ben Franklin Transit. Um, board of Directors were able to come to an agreement after a workshop and decide that discussing Further tax issues is not on the table at this time. Um, staff is happy to, to take that off our table as well. Morale has been pretty low within the organization. With that said, we our general manager just started today, had an opportunity to leave work a little early and stop and thank her for uh, applying to the position and really look forward to working with her and supporting her in her endeavors. She's got a lot of talent. She comes from other organizations, shows that she's got a proven history of streamlining and uh, increasing efficiency in whatever organization she is a part of. And um, for those of you who don't know, a big point of contention within the board of directors for BFT has been the perception that buses are always empty. Uh, we have data that supports otherwise, but regardless, you know, perception is what it is. And we are making efforts to try to streamline that by doing a pilot program with a smaller bus, which will hopefully um, decrease the cost to the citizens of Pasco and, and maybe mitigate some of that perception. So it should hopefully increase efficiency with maybe shorter ride times, um, price per mile. Uh, I think arbitrarily they threw a number like 11 cents per mile compared to 30 something for the big buses, which uh, again is a cool little cost savings to the taxpayer. So. Very excited to have that off the table and look forward to seeing what's next with BFT. Thank you. Anyone else wish to share any committee uh, participation? Uh, Mayor Patamaloni, is there anything you wish to share? Yes, thank you, Mayor Brahas. Um, 
so last week there was a uh, DT, DPDA meeting. Um, a large portion of the meeting was dedicated to a conversation about the upcoming Friday Foods Festival. Um, I hope to hear more information about that, um, exactly what the timing looks like. Um, I'll be honest, it was a little difficult to hear um, attending that meeting remotely. So I, I wasn't able to ensure I was able to capture all the details. But so that, that conversation should be, re should be really interesting. And then um, uh, related to that, to, to a greater or lesser extent, was a conversation about COPA, our, um, our city, sister city's um, organization with Colima, um, and how that's been, and bring up, potentially bring up the, uh, the governor of, um, of Colima up to um, Pasco this coming um, late summer, early fall. So um, interested to hear a lot more from that. I hope um, if staff has has more details on that, I'd welcome hearing it. Otherwise, I look forward to you know presentation from that organization um, uh, related to to what that was looking like when it's coming up. Thank you. Thank you for that, um, Councilman Serrano. Is there anything you wish to share? Nothing here. Thank you. Okay. So I will actually share a little bit uh, regarding the M5 Mexican Brass Band that was here uh, just last week, uh, the 15th and the 16th. They performed at the CBC um, Auditorium. Um, so what they are, and I, did, I was not aware who they are and who they were. Um, they play um, trumpets, trombones, uh, tubas. Uh, all brass instruments. They are from Mexico and had just recently arrived from a tour in Europe. Um, they put it. Uh, they put a little um, humor in their introduction to the songs um, as they were performing. Um, it was a beautiful event. Happened outdoors. We had the perfect weather for it. Um, if you've not heard of them before, M5 Brass Band. Look them up. They're awesome. Um, with nothing else to share, we will move on to item eight on our agenda, hearings and council action on ordinances and resolu resolutions relating thereto. Um, item A on our agenda, uh, public hearing continued and ordinance East uh, Lewis Place Row Vacation, uh, Vacation 2022-003, Director White. Thank you. Um, Madam Mayor and, and City Council, uh, as noted in the agenda report, this item is continued from the July 5th Council meeting in order to give um, staff and the applicant time to uh, develop a proper ordinance that reflects an access easement in case future road improvements or access or uh, roadway uh, egress is needed. Um, the survey was added to the ordinance, as we mentioned two weeks ago. So the appropriate easement and language uh, accompany this right-of-way vacation request. The staff is recommending uh, council approval of this at this time. Thank you, and go ahead. Great, thank you, Mr. Or Madam, Madam Mayor. Uh, the, uh, we just need to, this is kind of a clunky one since it's been continued, but at this point we just need to close the regular hearing or close the regular meeting and then open the public hearing, close it, and then we can move forward. Correct. And so, um, so at this point, we will be closing our regular meeting and opening a hearing. And with that, uh, do any of our council members um, have any questions? Mayor Pratam Maloney, do you have any questions before we proceed? Not at this time. Okay. And with no further questions from our council, um, does anyone uh, wish to speak on this item um, from our audience? Second call for any comments from our audience on this matter. Third and final call for public comment regarding this hearing. Hearing no comment, I will now close this hearing. And um, can I get a motion? I move to adopt the ordinance number 4596, vacating East the East Lewis Place right-of-way vacation 
and further authorize publication by summary only. There's a motion. Can I get a second? I'll second that. Moved and seconded. Um, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any aye. opposed, same sign. Aye. Sounds like we have no opposition and it passes unanimously. And we move on to item nine on our agenda. Ordinances and resolutions not relating to hearings. Uh, item A, uh, ordinance Sh Shaher rezone RT to C3 and Director White. Thank you, Madam Mayor and Council. This uh, rezone request is uh, for a parcel that's uh, roughly seven and a half acres in size. It's, it's located um, north of Lewis Place and at the very end of Avery Avenue, which is a private road. Uh, the request is from uh, the existing zoning of residential transition to C3, which aligns with our comprehensive plan, land use designation. The hearing, -er, hearing examiner conducted a public hearing on this in June and has forwarded a recommendation of approval for council consideration. Thank you for that. Um, do we have any questions from any of our council members or comments? Madam Mayor, would you like me to go through the quasi-judicial questions real quick? Sure. So uh, this is a quasi-judicial hearing that uh, is to render a final decision on materials presented. Uh, it's defined as a proceeding in which council defines the legal rights, duties, and privileges of specific parties in a hearing or other contested proceeding. Uh, the, appearance of fair, uh, the appearance of fairness doctrine applies, and the hearing must be fair in three respects, form, substance, and appearance. All council members should consider whether they have potential conflicts as follows. A, a demonstrated bias for or against any of the parties. B, any direct or indirect financial interest in the outcome of the proceeding which would affect the council member personally. C, whether there are, has been any prejudgment of the issues prior to the hearing of the facts. D, whether there has been any ex parte contact with anyone other than the staff prior to this hearing. And E, any other conflict which a council member believes uh, would prevent them from hearing this matter fairly and impartially. If any council member has any of these concerns or disclosures, now would be the time to make those known. Hearing none, uh, are there any members of the public uh, seeking to disqualify a member of council from participating in this proceeding? Hearing none. Okay. And with that, um, I went ahead a little too quick. Do we have any comments from our council? Any questions regarding this subject? Hearing none, can I get a motion? I move to adopt ordinance uh, number 4597, approving a rezone to lots two and three, short plat 99-22 from RT to a C3 and further authorize publication by summer, summary only. There's a motion, can I get a second? Second. Moved and seconded. Um, all those in favor say aye. 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 <clears throat> Any opposed? Same sign. Hearing no opposition, it passes unanimously. Item B on our agenda, um, ordinance, Brochy Orchards Rezone RT to R1 and Director White. Thank you again, Madam Mayor. And this rezone request is for a much smaller site. It's just a little uh, over two acres. It's located on the south side of Helena Street, as you can see on the uh, screen, and west of the Terra Vida development. Once again, it's a request to take the existing RT, residential transition zoning, which is really just a holding zone uh, awaiting road improvements and utilities and change that to R1, which is our single family low density zoning district. The hearing examiner also conducted a public hearing on this rezone request in June, and like the uh, rezone request uh, before, and the next one, as a matter of fact, has recommended a, uh, uh, approval of the proposal. Okay, Mr. Ferguson. Great, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, again, uh, the same uh, uh, potential conflicts apply, uh, demonstrated bias. Uh, any direct or indirect financial interest, uh, any prejudgment of the issues, uh, whether there's been any ex parte contact, uh, and uh, 
any other con uh, conflict that a council member believes would prevent them from hearing the matter fairly and impartially. Uh, if there's any council member that has any concerns or disclosures, now would be the time to make those known. Hearing none, are there any members of the public seeking to disqualify a member of council from participating in this proceeding? And no objections. Thank you. And with that, do any of the council members have any questions or comments regarding this subject? Hearing none, can I get a motion? I move to adopt ordinance number 4598, approving a rezone to block five, Washington addition to Pasco from RT to R1 and further authorized by publication by summary only. There's a motion. Can I get a second? I'll second that. It's moved and seconded by Councilwoman Roach. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed, same sign. Hearing not, no opposition, it passes unanimously. Thank you. And with that, we move on to item C on the agenda. Um, Ordinance Jubilee Foundation Rezone RT to R4. And again, Director Roy. Thank you, Madam Mayor and City Council. This proposal uh, is uh, on a site that's just a little bit less than four and a half acres. It's located adjacent to A Street on the north side, and it's also west of the Terra Vida uh, subdivision. Again, it's a rezone from the RT residential transition zone to R4, which is our high density zoning district. And like the two previous rezones, the hearing examiner conducted a public hearing on this matter in June and has forwarded a recommendation of approval. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, same uh, uh, conflict, potential conflicts uh, apply, uh, demonstrated bias, uh, direct or indirect financial interest, uh, any prejudgment, ex parte contact, or uh, any other conflict that a council member believes would prevent them from hearing this matter fairly and impartially. If there's any council member that has any concerns or disclosures about this matter, now would be the time to make those known. Hearing none, uh, are there any members of the public seeking to disqualify a member of council from participating in the proceedings? And no objections. Thank you. And with that, um, do any of the council members have any questions or comments regarding this subject? Hearing none, can I get a motion? I move to <clears throat> I move to adopt ordinance number 4599, approving a rezone of blocks 11 and 12, Washington addition to Pasco from RT to R4, and further authorized publication by summary only. Thank you. I have a motion. Can I get a second? Second. Moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed, same sign. Hearing no opposition, it passes unanimously. Thank you. Item D on our agenda, ordinance, ordinance and resolution, budget amendment and bid award for West Pasco Water Treatment Plant Expansion Phase 2. And we now switch over to Director Worley. Thank you, Madam Mayor, members of council. Uh, the council may recall that uh, staff has been before council several times on different projects related to the West Pasco water treatment plant improvements. Uh, phase one is under construction. And phase two, it, we had the design completed, put it out to bid, got three very favorable bids. And one of them was Apollo. Apollo just happens to be the um, contractor that's out right now doing phase one. So we feel really good about the bids that we received. And so this project will uh, increase the capacity to get the increased treated water out into the water distribution system. And so with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you for that, Director Worley. Um, at this point, uh, any of our council members have any questions or comments regarding this subject? <clears throat> Mayor Perdemaloni or Councilman Serrano, any questions or comments? Nothing here. Nothing for me. Hearing no questions or comments, can I get a motion, please? I move to approve resolution number 4206, awarding bid number 21297 for the West Pasco Water Treatment Plant Expansion Phase 2, Project 2 Apollo Incorporated of Pasco, Washington. 
and further authorize the city manager to execute the contract documents and allowing all necessary budget adjustments. Thank you. I have a motion. Can I get a second? I'll second that. Moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposition? Uh, same sign. Hearing none, it passes unanimously. And uh, Councilman Brown, this is a two for one if you want to go ahead and do the second part for this as well. I move to adopt ordinance number 4601, amending the 2021 and 22 biannual budget for the city of Pasco, Washington by providing supplement thereto to provide additional appropriation in the city's water fund for the construction of the West Pasco water treatment plant improvement phase two. I have a motion. Can I get a second? Second. Moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. If, that, if you're waiting on me, I did have an eye. I think the microphone was working. Okay. <laughs> no opposition and it passed Sorry. unanimously. Thank you for that clarification, Councilman Serrano. Uh, with that, we move on to item E on the agenda, ordinances, budget adjustments, city purchase of Thunderbird Motel and Fire Station number 85 Street and Utilities Work. Uh, Director Sigdell. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor and Council. Uh, these are two items that Council is familiar with. Uh, you have made um, actions on purchase of the Thunderbird uh, Motel um, in, back in May, as well as some site work for street and utility work for the Station 85 uh, facility as well at, on the same day. Uh, the action in front of you is purely uh, a budget-related action item, which requires a formal ordinance uh, from the council to be approved uh, to include those as an approved budget item since they were not included in the budget that has been approved by the council, um, the original budget, as well as the supplements uh, that have been done since then. So that is the action that we're asking at this point, uh, which is purely a budget related uh, action. Thank you for that. Any questions or comments from our council? Hearing none, can I get a motion? I move to adopt ordinance number 4601, authorizing the expenditure of bond revenue for the purpose of financing the construction costs associated with the future Pasco Fire Station number 85 site work project and amending the 2021-2022 biennial, biennial budget general construction fund and future authorized publication by summary only. I have a motion. Can I get a second? I'll second that. It's moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 And it sounds like we don't have an opposition. The motion has a miss a spelling. It says wit instead of with. Just FYI. Okay, we'll get that fixed. Um, sounds like no opposition. Um, so it passes unanimously. Uh, Councilwoman Roach, so that's a two for one. So you want to go ahead and do the second part? I will. I move to adopt ordinance number 4602, amending the 2021-2022 biennial budget of the city of Pasco, Washington by providing supplemental here thereto to provide additional appropriation in the city's economic development fund for the purchase of property located at 414 West Columbia Street, Pasco, Washington, and future authorized publication by summary only. I have a motion. Can I get a second? Moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed, same sign. Hearing none, it passes unanimously. And wow, that went pretty quick. So we are on item 10, any unfinished business? City Manager Dave, any unfinished business? Not this evening. None no. listed. Item 11, any new business? None listed. <laughs> item 12, miscellaneous discussion, city manager. So I did have a few items I wanted to share with council. Uh, first and foremost, I know it's on the mind of uh, 
a lot of our community members and certainly council and a little quick update on the animal control uh, authority so as council's aware just a few days ago uh, benton franklin Humane society contract to operate uh, the tri-city animal shelter uh, came to an end and the city of pasco assumed control of the animal shelter that transition has gone very smoothly uh, i want to say uh, in large part to uh, not only our, our temporary staff we were able to hire and uh, a great group of uh, volunteers but uh, facilities manager dan dota and senior management analyst angela Pashan. both of them worked through the weekend to make sure uh, we didn't miss anything uh, as did a number of our uh, uh, staff temporary staff and uh, and volunteers so uh, just a great job uh, picking up the pieces there uh, certainly I, and I don't want to I don't want to leave the impression that uh, the Humane Society didn't leave things in pretty good order but just that kind of a transition takes a lot of effort and uh, and uh, in our and our folks really stepped in we had 120 volunteer hours just over the weekend walking dogs cleaning organizing uh, doing some improvements to the grounds uh, note that the shelters received uh, overwhelming amount of support from the community uh, with a lot of folks uh, requesting how they can donate a lot of focus uh, in the last uh, over the weekend went to improving efficiencies with uh, with our new staff uh, including uh, improved equipment learn a little bit about the the um, uh, cleanliness of steel wool versus plastic today for dog bowls right that's an important thing in kitty litter containers uh, but uh, processes and uh, and reporting uh, getting used to some new software uh, from a uh, population standpoint uh, 16 ans animals were transferred out of the facility this weekend uh, but we took in 16 cats two kittens seven dogs and two puppies so we're a little bit up from over the weekend uh, priorities this week uh, data validation uh, continue working on internal uh, efficiencies, establishing relationships with our vet clinics, which uh, we've, we've uh, had really good support from our vet clinics and even our, uh, I heard today we had 700 oral um, uh, hypodermic syringes, you know, from uh, one of the local uh, pharmacies that uh, is, is necessary for uh, medication uh, and applying medication to some of our animals. Um, scheduling spays and spays and neuters. Uh, the uh, facility isn't open necessarily to the public, but it is for surrenders. It is for uh, adoptions by appointment. And uh, we're gonna get to opening that later in the week. Uh, establishing our Facebook page and then prioritization of donation requests. Request. This is a you know reminder, this is a temporary structure while, we, while gearing up and because the care of these animals is uh, of the utmost importance uh, there is a request for a proposal for new operators out and that closes uh, august 5th with a selection process uh, to follow uh, in the meantime it's our intent to work with our temporary staff and our volunteers and the public uh, to assure the safety and well-being of the animals and to help uh, continue to improve operations and relationships in a manner the new operator can develop or can build on so we're excited uh, i think as a staff to be kind of given the opportunity and and uh like i say mr dota miss Bashan uh, really have stepped up and kind of out of their elements you know uh to some yeah. to a large degree but uh they're both very passionate uh, about it and very excited about the opportunity i, I want to talk a little bit about uh community health efforts for humans so uh we had the uh, recent passing of the 0.1% uh, mental health sales tax and the two counties have been working towards implementing uh, a plan to make that happen. Uh, as such, we're kind of entering a new realm of care with respect to community health. Chief Gear has been in the process this week of organizing a comprehensive pre presentation by several of our mental health providers to inform the council in the public on efforts currently occurring and those in the works so a lot has changed i think we last did this uh, the mayor and i were talking for the meeting uh, we last did this just pre-covid and there were a lot of gaps uh, clearly 
you know, a lot of folks are out there doing good work. Since then, there's actually been quite a bit of money that's come in through, you know, COVID dollars. And then now we have this uh, zero point uh, or tenth of a percent uh, mental health sales tax on top of it. So I, I think you're going to hear that things have gotten better and that we're on a trajectory for some real positive uh, change in, in terms of the robustness and comprehensiveness of services. So we're, we're looking to coordinate this. We have a number of schedules to accommodate, looking to coordinate this for the August 22nd workshop. Uh, presentation will include uh, the city's patient uh, resource navigator program, uh, which has developed since that time we last talked, uh, followed by three to five of our local providers and then a bit of an update on the 10th of a percent committee. That, that committee's first meeting is July 29th, their first official meeting. So probably won't be a lot in that regard, but I think it'll be good for council and the community to hear uh, that those things are underway. And then just a couple other quick announcements, uh, exciting thing, and I know the mayor plans on attending, but uh, this Friday at 9 a.m., right in the council chambers here, uh, Morningstar Baptist Church uh, will be reviewed for nomination to the state and National Register of Historic Places at a meeting of the Governor's Advisory Council. So that's something happening right in this building. Uh, heads up for Council and, and work on your schedules uh, for the newer ones. Uh, we'll escort you, staff or police department will escort you, but National Night Out is coming up. August 2nd, and on that night, you know, for those councils that have been around, uh, council members have the opportunity to go out, visit some of the national night uh, festivities and neighborhood block type parties and so forth. So please let April know if you're interested so we can kind of coordinate that with the PD <coughs> Police Department. And then another uh, project that you, you, you probably haven't heard of lately, or you might have heard bits and pieces of it. And uh, that is something that it's taken hold very quickly, and it is the regional academies associated with uh, Basic Law Enforcement Academy. Basic Law Enforcement Academy has historically been centralized over in, in Burien and the Puget Sound area, and that's where all our officers uh, go to get their basic law enforcement uh, training and their certification. Uh, several week uh, course of instruction and and uh, post physical uh, and academic and real life uh, uh, re real life testing and and uh, and training so one of the things i think we've all felt that have been watching this for a while is that academy has been getting more and more crowded uh, we've had on our legislative agenda more than once uh, the need for additional academies to occur to and, and really that facility now has reached its maximum in terms of how many academies they can host uh, annually. And it's very crowded. We're, we're talking about classes of people having to move, uh, move aside uh, when they're doing push-ups so that other people can march past. It is really getting super crowded now. Uh, so the Belia folks, the executive director and the director, deputy director, uh, have been looking at alternatives to that. Uh, and our chiefs and sheriffs here got together uh, to discuss with them a regional academy for the Tri-Cities. That's going to allow a lot of things to happen. One, uh, scheduling uh, will be a lot better. Two, it'll give us a little bit better opportunity to recruit folks that maybe can't afford to go to Western Washington uh, every day, every night for eight weeks. Uh, if it's if the academy is local, they can be home at night. So you know, single parents, uh, you know, folks like that that can't be away for that period of time, uh, aren't then precluded from being a police officer. And so I, I think it's going to open up some great opportunities for our community. Uh, we had a meeting in our police uh, community room just uh, last week, and Senator Lovick, who's been a big supporter of this from the 44th district. Uh, also former sheriff and county executive over in Snohomish County. Uh, Senator Lovick was there, very positive on it, and he's a uh, uh, very influential senator on this particular topic. And uh, we were able to tour them, uh, our training building, as well as some other facilities, Hammer, uh, over in Kennewick. And uh, the group left very impressed. It's very likely we're going to be getting a... a um, basic law enforcement uh, regional academy 
here in the Tri-Cities. There's also probably going to be other academies, potentially Bellingham, potentially Snohomish County, Everett area, uh, potentially Vancouver. Uh, already is one in, in Spokane. That's the only other one that exists right now. So uh, that is something we'll have. Uh, uh, Deputy City Manager Lincoln's already drafted something for our legislative agenda. Uh, we'd be bringing to council here pretty quick, and uh, that's something we'll probably be working on during session. So I did want to give you a heads up on that, as probably you're going to start to see some things break on that if you haven't already heard some inklings of it. That's all I had for this evening. Thank you for that. Um, I did see the Facebook post. Um, I was very impressed when I read the title. I'm like, wow, we do need another academy, and I'm glad they're looking at PASCO. Uh, on that note, I do want to share, I know I shared an email with you, Dave, and with Chief uh, Roski regarding our um, Coffee with a Cop last week. Um, we'd just like to invite our council members, if ever you have the opportunity to be at a ribbon cutting, Coffee with a Cop, or any community event, I just want to let you know that we do have community, um, community members that are looking at us participating. And the reason why I bring this up is because at our uh, Coffee with a Cop, I was there. Um, there was a lady that had just moved here from California, did not have the experience, the positive experience we have with our police department here. She was impressed that there was officers taking pictures with kids. Kids were smiling, families were out there. She has not had this experience in LA. She's from LA. Um, and so she made a point to approach the chief. She never thought the chief would be out at a community event like this. Um, she was very impressed and then heard that council member was there. The mayor was there. So she came over and, and said hi. And she just left with the positive note of what PASCO is and what the involvement is of the police department. Um, she did send me a personal email that I then forwarded to Chief and to Dave, um, just saying how impressed she was, and it was a delight, and she looks forward to integrating into the community. So little things like that is what makes the city of Pasco um, unique. And so, again, just want to encourage, um, if you have the time, um, you know, be out there, be in the community, um, new people that are not, that have not had the positive experience in other places in their other cities, um, and see that here, it's it's awesome to hear that. It's it's beautiful to hear that. So, um, yeah, let's let's be out there and welcome everyone to our our city. And with that, um, uh, Mayor Ross. Yes, yeah, sir. If you want to go ahead and share. Yeah, I, yeah. I have two items for miscellaneous discussion. So, th thank you, um, Mr. Zabon. I want to follow up with one item that I know has been of concern to the. Um, animal advocates in the community about the, 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 the temporary direction we're going on the um, animal uh, control. Um, I know in our, in our typical agreements we have, in essence, the cities pay for something like three days worth of care or, or so many days worth of care. And then anything beyond that time to get the animals adopted, if I understand correctly, is taken care of by the volunteers at the facility or the, by the nonprofit that's running the facility. Um, First off, is that accurate? Do I have that story correct? I would say that's probably <clears throat> roughly correct, but I unfortunately, uh, Director Ratkai is not here, so I I, I don't want to put misinformation out there. Sure, that's, that's, that's kind of my, my understanding the, too, the, but the I don't have that question. level of detail. Oh. Thinking, so, sorry, the, I guess my, my the, the point I want to make is that um, I know a lot are concerned that you know what are we going to do with the animals after that in this temporary situation when the city the city's um, um, the city agreements hasn't necessarily covered that in the past so I'd be interested in understanding um, as we firm up our processes procedures uh, how how we're going to handle that in this interim period until hopefully we get a, a permanent um, contractor on board so if, we, if you can follow up with that I would really appreciate that yeah I I, I would. Uh, if I, if I can, we, we do have a, a volu an organized volunteer group that we're working with that has also a um, nonprofit called the Friends of the Tri-City Animal Shelter. Okay, great. Yeah, the specific part is, is that's concerning is um, some people are concerned that there might be um, um, a different policy for euthanization of animals. And so we I just want to make sure that we hit that. Um, 
the other item, completely unrelated, uh, I just want to let everyone know um, in the community that know that the Franklin County Historical uh, Society is, has a has set up a community lecture series, and this Thursday at 7 p.m. at the museum, there is a speaker, uh, um, Jake uh, Mendez, um, and he's speaking on um, the topic is the art of rebellion, social justice, and Chicana uh, slash Chicano visual arts. So um, if you're interested in uh, attending that, that's a uh, you know, community event that's coming up uh, uh, just this Thursday. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that, Deputy Mayor. It did actually slip my mind. I will be attending on Thursday. Go ahead. If, if I could, Mayor, thank you. Uh, just one more comment. Uh, I did want to follow up on uh, Deputy Mayor's comment uh, and certainly understand why uh, the deputy mayor asked the question or, or made the comment. I want to assure folks that our, our policy is not to euthanize pets once they've been there the three days. That's absolutely not what's happening out there. So if anybody has that concern, please rest easy. That is not uh, what the, that's not what's going to happen at this point. So thank you. Thank you for that. Madam Mayor. Just a quick comment. Um, I don't know how to bring this up, I guess, but you know your your comments about being an integrated community and how diverse we are and being able to share moments with our police officers and our fire department. Um, you know, I want to. It makes me think of you know uh, I'm gonna misquote it, but a quote by MLK about being judged by the content of your character, not the color of your skin. And I think that as great as our community is, um, we still got a lot of work to do. Um, I'll leave it at that. Thank you for that. Definitely something to ponder on, and, and it's true. Um, we are a young community, and um, we are learning from our errors. And that's, I think, um, if we continue to learn, to move forward and not step back and, and continue repeating past mistakes, you know, we're still going to make mistakes, but as long as we move forward and, and grow from that. Thank you for sharing that quote. Any further comment, uh, Councilman Serrano, Mayor Pertem Maloney? Nothing there. Sounds like there's no further comment. It is now 7.53 and this meeting is adjourned. Thank you everyone for joining this evening. <laughs>